Hello friends. So, today we will be talking about self care and this is a very important subject because after all in community based palliative care everybody is working. Of course, medicos are working, nurses are working, volunteers, other health care givers and most importantly caregivers the people who are generally surrounded around the patient, the children, wife or husband or maybe anybody and when they have to give palliative care to the patient who are suffering from life limiting diseases they do not know when it is going to end. Therefore, they get tired and if they do not look after themselves then they also there is a chance that they also might fall sick and it is not going to help anybody neither to the caregiver nor to the medical professionals and of course, not to the patient himself or herself. Therefore, self care remains an important subject for the people who are engaged in constant care of people who are suffering from life limiting diseases. Self care is an act of self love. This is what I written on the main slide. If you look after yourself, that means you are loving yourself. It is very important to love yourself before you love others. If you do not love yourself, you do not look after yourself, you might fall sick and you will be of no use to yourself, nor to those patients whom you are serving. Actually speaking in palliative care people talk about two types of care, self care that is for the people who are caring for the kith and kin who are suffering from some diseases and second thing is known as respite care. This is for the people, this is for the caregivers who had been giving constant care to the patients of palliative care. When I say constant care that means 24 by 7 they are engaged physically, socially, mentally and naturally after all this is a human body. If you do not give respite, if you do not uh, take certain types of rest, if you do not take vacations then that is not going to help you, your body also might need some rest and when they take rest that is called respite care from the continuous work of palliative care, looking after palliative care patients, they need a break and that break whether it is a few hours, whether it is a few days, maybe of couple of weeks that is called respite care. Here in this lecture we will be basically talking about self care. The objective, the partic participants that the students must learn how to promote, ensure and or restore mental and physical health and or that means it happens that mentally and physically if you feel sick, if you are not happy then you are supposed to restore before you provide some sort of succor, some sort of help to others. Second it is it prevents manage or recover from diseases, injury or trauma. You also might fall sick, you might get some injury and therefore, you need to look after self care, self care, achieve an overall sense of personal well being. You see we are human beings and our objective has been always and every time to remain happy. Everybody wants to be happy in the life you know, unhappiness do come, troubles do come, we cannot avoid them, but then again you are supposed to restore that tranquil state of your mind and that is the purpose of human being that they must live happily and to live happily you have to look after yourself and that is called self care. Simply to put it the objective is to take care of yourself, look after yourself, nobody else is going to look after, it is a personal responsibility. Sometimes persons, people, some people do get burdened, some people are so emotional that they just carry away in looking after others and in turn they mismanage their personal life. 
they damage their life. Mentally, they feel unhappy. So, if you take care of yourself, it replenishes you. It replenishes your energy. It is just like taking a sleep. Whole day, if you keep on working, and in the evening, if you just take six to eight hours of sleep, next day again you are fresh, totally refreshed by that rest. How how do you replenish? That you do the activities that support your well-being, support your well-being physically, mentally. We have come for this particular lecture at IIT Kanpur. In the morning, we got up because we wanted to refresh ourselves. Yesterday, we had many lectures. We are really tired in the evening. In the morning, when we went out for 20 minutes in the fresh air of IIT, it's a lovely green campus. We could breathe lots of oxygen, and we feel that we are in the seventh heaven. You know that is how such activities can replenish your energy, lost energy. Why to replenish? If you replenish, then your energy is at full level, and therefore you can provide this energy to others in looking after them. It is just normal thing. If you drive 200, 300, 400 kilometers in the car, you need to replenish. You need to refuel your car. Otherwise, the car will not won't go further. So when we spend our energy in our day-to-day -day routine, and it may be for looking after our ill relatives, then there is a requirement to replenish our energy so that we can continuously work for the well-being of our ill patients, deceased people. Why self-care is important? It is important to maintain a healthy relationship with yourself as it produces positive feelings and boost your confidence and self-esteem. This statement is very important. We are talking about relationship with yourself. And how do you feel that you are happy with yourself? When you think your body is looking, you are looking up to your body, you are eating well, you are not getting angry with anybody, you are doing your work 100%, you generally act in present moment and that is how you look up to yourself. You must love yourself before you start loving others. Second point, also self-care is necessary to remind you, yourself and others that your needs are important too. Your needs are important too. Here I am not telling you to become selfish. No, not at all. You have to be cooperative. You have to help others 100 percent. And particularly you are in the business of palliative care, you have to keep on helping the people till the time they recover or they just, you know, leave this particular world. To look after your needs does not mean that you are selfish and you do not look after others. You have to look after your needs so that you remain happy with yourself. And that ensures that you stay sharp, and motivated and healthy. You have got to nourish to flourish. It's simple as that if you have got a small garden at your place or maybe anywhere else, you must have seen if you do not give fertilizers or water, that sapling or plant will not flourish. It will not give fruits or flowers. Similarly, it is with we human being also. If we do not replenish our energy every day, we will not feel happy the next day. What is self-care? It's a multi-dimensional concept, multi-dimensional concept in which the interdependency of mental and physical well-being creates an enhanced quality of life and sense of personal fulfillment. When you are physically and mentally happy, you always feel happy. And give, that gives a sense of personal satisfaction, personal fulfillment. Yes, I am also something because I am looking after myself and in turn I am looking after others. Ideally, self-care is practiced in seven functional domains, seven domains, emotional, physical, spiritual, intellectual, social, relational and safety and security. 
of yourself. Therefore, we said it earlier, it is a multi-dimensional concept and everything is interdependent. An operational definition of resilience. There is no general consensus on the operational definition of resilience. Resilience means, yes, you can sustain yourself, even if you get tired, you can keep on working till you achieve your particular aim. For this workshop, we will define resilience as effective coping and adaption in the face of major life stress. Now, when a, whenever a caregiver is generally giving 24 by 7 attention to the tired and ill people, naturally it produces some sort of stress, physical stress as well as mental stress. Now, if you adapt well to this stressful conditions, then it is called that your resilience is good. The first assumption in this definition is that resilience begins with some form of obstacle, trauma or adverse event. Obstacle, anything can be when you have to appear for a major examination, trauma, either you are suffering from something or to your relations very close relations, they are suffering something, an adverse event, it can be anything, death of some kith and kin, very close relative. So, all these things, they come under the definition of operational resilience. Individuals encounter a situation that challenges them or some personal level to utilize resources in order to overcome the situation. The second assumption for resilience is the specification of resources, both internal and external, that people draw upon to overcome this situation. Now, these resources are nothing but what you are obtaining by looking after yourself, taking all the seven dimension of self-care. That means, you are at a full energy level. Resources that are associated with resilience include personality traits and deliberate actions. Resilient behaviors include optimism, perspective talking, establishing and achieving goals, self-confidence and sustaining positive relationship. That means, you should be positive. If you are positive, you are optimistic, you always believe in God, you believe in spirituality, you have self-confidence that whatever obstacles, whatever problems you are facing presently, you are you will be overcoming those obstacles in near future. Five factors of resilience, personal strength, social competence, structured style, family cohesion and social resources. Now, let us come to the seven dimension. I said it is a multi-dimensional and they are basically interrelated, interdependent. So, we will take on this seven dimension one by one, emotional self-care, physical self-care, spiritual self-care, intellectual, social, relational self-care and finally, safety and security of self-care. Now, this particular picture, if you see, it is just not a picture. It is how these stones have been placed so that they balance themselves. The bigger the stone, it is at the lower level. The smaller the stone, it is at the upper level. Domains of self-care, physical, social, mental, spiritual, emotional. The pictures tell you, physical means don't, there is a bed, take enough rest, eat natural food and not the fast food. Wear your shoes and go out, go to the gymnasium, go for walking, that gives you physical strength. Social have positive relationship with your friends, colleagues, peers, your relatives. Mental, do not watch that soap operas or you know all those things, what is coming on TVs. Do not be using your mobile every now and then, because that gives you mental stress and unnecessarily that opens up negative file in your mind. So, to have mental peace, read some good books, go out, enjoy the nature spiritual, you must believe in God, 
whatever God is, you may call him Krishna, Ram, Jesus, Allah, anybody. You may not take those names, but there is something, there is some superpower, you know, some spirit is there, higher than us, higher than any, any sort of science that helped us to remain happy in our life, in spite of all the obstacles. So the spiritual strength puts you way ahead when you are get distressed, when you are under tension. Emotional, love everybody, do not hate others, do not get angry with others, because the anger, of course, the person who is at the other end also feels unhappy, and you yourself also after getting angry don't feel happy. Emotional self-care. Identifying, accepting, and expressing a range of feelings. Research indicates there is an important connection between emotion and health. This is what we have seen everywhere in our life. The people are too emo emotional, you have to be, but if you are too emotional, it affects your health adversely. Doctors, nurses, patients, and caregivers are likely to encounter that cause intense emotions of anxiety, fear, anger, stress, and insecurity. More so for patients as are living through the disease itself. If not effectively addressed, these feelings can have a negative impact on response, workers' well-being. Physical self-care, fitness, nutrition, and good health practices. You have to believe in that uh, sort of mind-body connection also. If body is physically fit, you are mentally fit. And if you are not happy mentally, even if you may be physically fit, you feel that you are not okay, you are not in good shape. So you have to establish good connection between your mind and body. And recent advances in psychological, medical and physiological research have led to a new way of thinking about health and illness. It is always being said, a healthy mind has got a healthy body and healthy body has got a healthy mind. The mind-body approach is concerned with understanding how biology, behavior and social context influence health and illness, the biopsychological model. The biopsychosocial model views health and illness as products of biological characteristics, behavioral factors, and social conditions like cultural influences, family relationship, and social support. And therefore, in medical world, so many doctors are saying that the most of the diseases, up to 95 percent of the diseases, they are actually not diseases. They are basically problems which are being faced by the people, and they are psychosomatic problems. So, here is the point that you have to remain positive every time. Mind-body fitness is produced by a combination of exercise and diet. Physical activity and nutritive food intake help regulate brain and body chemistry. Good health practices also enhance mind-body fitness through reducing or eliminating negative. Physiological effects of smoking, excessive alcohol consumption, over or under use of drugs and periods of extended wakefulness. I want to give two points here because mind-body fitness is a combination of exercise and diet. Exercise nowadays what has happened that we generally get engaged with TV, we get engaged with the mobile and we have stopped going outside. We generally remain, we are chair bound. We are homebound. Even on Saturdays, Sundays also we do not go out. We never go for a walk. It is always suggested, it is required that minimum 30 to 60 minutes of walk, some sort of physical exercise is a must to keep your body physically fit. Second, diet. In olden times, there are no such thing as fast food. Now, everything is bloody fast. The life has gone very fast. Earlier we used to walk and then a bicycle came, then the two wheelers came, three wheelers and four wheelers, ambassador came, Fiat came, and now people want, you know, BMWs, Audis, 
they want to travel at a speed of 130, 140 kilometer per hour. In diet also, because of fast food, we are eating so much of fat, calorie intake is too much, whereas our calorie output is less because very less exercise we are performing. There has to be a proper balance between diet and exercise to keep your body physically fit. Good health practices, walking around, doing some exercises and your diet should be always natural food like here a guy is just taking a glass of either juice or milk. Third dimension is religious and spiritual self-care. The ongoing search for meaning and or religious understanding of life and beyond. Now, of course, medical science is just trying to do all those research, but otherwise in Bharatvash, in olden systems, we always believed in spirituality. All our Shastras, Vedas and Purans, they talk about spirituality. All Rishis, they were generally staying in the ashrams, mostly in forest, away from all these civilian habitats. Spiritual self-care addresses the ongoing search for meaning and understanding in life and what may extend beyond. Now we are going for all uh, bhautik, that is uh, physical advances, you know, we want money, we want beautiful home, bungalows, this or that and for that we waste our whole life in earning money. We do not bother about mental peace. Fostering spiritual self-care involves the exploration and expression of beliefs and values that are shaped by ex experience. If we are generally related with earning money, then we are not going to have any relation with God or with spirituality. But time must come in our life that spirituality must take priority over our earning system. Spirituality may also be expressed through connections to nature and the world and may be characterized as an individual sense of purpose. Spiritual self-care can be facilitated in numerous ways from simply watching the sunrise to becoming active in organized religion or other spiritual communities. If you go out during sunrise, you just see how the sun, beautiful sun is coming up and the whole sky in the eastern horizon becomes either saffron or golden yellow or like that. You know. That is where you understand what the nature is. Nature is so big. When you pour water in the plants or gamlas at your home, you are just having a bucket of water, just a bucket of water. But when the nature wants to irrigate, it will rain over 100 squares of kilometers and anything, it is not in buckets or anything, it will rain all over. So nature is so big, so immense and that is where we must understand that our system, our mind also must try and think bigger and bigger like nature, accept others, love others. Intellectual self-care, interest in ideas, learning critical thinking and creativity. You see, well, let me remind you that we are also a sort of animal because we are the part of animal kingdoms. But we are animal with a bigger brain, smarter brain, we know how to live how to lead our life with a purpose and other animals like cows and buffaloes and they do not know that sort of life. We being very smart animal in this animal kingdom, we must make use of critical thinking and creativity and that is how we are going forward. I am almost more than 70 years of age. I know when I was a child, there was no electricity. We used to burn midnight lamps to study. There were no buses, there were no aircrafts. There were, there were no radios. Radios all came much later than the TV and this, all these fast cars and everything. That is because human beings, they made use of their mind. They made use of this creativity. Of course, it has happened that this creativity has caused 
production of nuclear weapons also but that is uh, that happens Every, everything has got two things it is positive and negative positively we have certain equipment certain advancement in technology which helps the humanity as such and at the same time we have certain uh, what can we say some sort of equipments weapons coming up which can destroy the whole civilization and that is what is happening in some parts of Africa. Intellectual self care is about engaging regularly in critical thinking and inquiry to expand knowledge and stimulate the mind. At the most basic level intellectual self care involves an abiding interest in ideas, learning, thinking and creating creativity. I generally believe in that particular sentence if you stop learning then you become dead. If you stop learning you become dead because you do not learn anything like a normal stone. The things which do not have any life they do not learn anything at all. But just being human being we keep on learning every now and then what we are in the past what we are presently and will be totally different in the future. Different types of intelligence verbal, mathematical, musical, spatial, kinetic, body control, intrapersonal and interpersonal. Intrapersonal this is very important you have to understand yourself who am I, why am I here, why I have been born as a human being and not as an animal. Every time you have to have critical thinking of what you are doing, what you want to do and why are you doing all those things. That self understanding, self evolution makes you a very happy person. Social self care, investment in relationship outside of family, outside of family. We always say that man is a social animal because we live in society. And the people who become antisocial, who become gangsters, they live in prisons. But very few people they live in the prisons because they do not look after this aspect of social self care. Social self care pertains to regular investment in relationship outside of immediate family. Your immediate family, the core family, what you call it, father, mother, children, and some nearest cousins and other people. These people you definitely love, you have proper relations with them. But it is important to look after the relations with others like your friends, like your colleagues in the classroom, like your peers, like the workers in your establishment, in your corporate sectors, like medical staff working in the hospital. They must be loving their own personal families but at the same time when they come to the hospital they have to look after the interest of those people who are generally having treatment in those wards that is called social self care. Friendship may provide emotional support, companionship, reciprocity and problem solving assistance. The importance of social self care, the rigors of professional work often limit time for social self care. Yes, nowadays it has happened. Earlier the people used to work for 6 hours a day and then it has gone up to 8 hours a day and now it is going much beyond that. That has happened in today's fast life and therefore you do not have any time to visit your friends. On weekend days you generally go out with your personal family. The research has demonstrated the importance of doing so. For example, the 2001 Harvard Medical School's Nurses Health study showed that friendship among women play an important role in enhancing health and quality of life. The study concluded that the lack of at least one good confidante is as detrimental to a woman's health as smoking or obesity. Here the emphasis on having one good confidante on which you know some person in your personal life, some friend with whom you can share any type of secret. Normally it happens whenever something 
I will happen, something bad happens, you keep it in your mind and then it gets circulated in your mind and it, it explodes sometime. It brings stress, if you do not do any treatment, self-treatment, then it becomes depression. Talking out your problem with somebody who, in whom you have got 100 percent confidence, it releases your stress. Relational self-care, this is the relational self-care that is within the family. I have given a very nice picture, you cannot drink from an empty cup. Earlier I said in self-care, when you are not strong enough, when you are not mentally happy, you cannot help others. Similarly, here also within your family, if you do not look after each other, you cannot look after anybody outside your family. Strengthening relationship with parents, spouses, children, parents and extended family. Relational self-care pertains to the establishment of develop, development and strengthening of relationship with life, partners, spouses, children, parents and extended family. Maintaining strong family ties is at the core of relational self-care. Last is the safety and security self-care. Comfort with personal, environmental, financial and home planning. Here we, uh, safety and security involves so many things. Safety like if you are driving, you may like, you, you may like fast driving, but the always you find lots of writings on the road. Speed does give you thrills, but it kills you sometimes. That is the safety part of your life. Financial, how much you should spend? If you keep on spending, if you keep on spending more than what you are earning every month or every year, that means you are going to be a debtor. Safety and security issues are only addressed when a threat, breach of safety or trauma occurs. This is the problem. Such things we come to know when we fall into the debt, when we meet with an accident and that is the time when we think, oh, oh my God, like so many people keep dying in car accidents, motorcycle accidents. People do not wear the seat belt. The two-wheeler drivers, drivers, they do not wear the helmet. Planning ahead can alleviate some of the stress of an actual event through creating a sense of preparedness and greater control. Plan ahead, this is a development plan of action. Just remember, think about what could go wrong if the action plan is implemented. Make a list of possible problems, prioritize the list in terms of the most serious problem that could happen. Think about ways to keep the most serious problem from happening. Think about ways to reduce the effects if the problem happens anyway and do this for all the possible problems on the list. Just think about your life. What can happen? What problems can occur in your life? Ten things, start doing it now. Daily go for a walk, run or jog. Meditate or do deep breathing, pranayam for 10 minutes. Take a break when you need it. Take a break and do not break yourself by working hard. Choose who you spend time with. Your company matters. If your friends are negative, you become negative and your positivity is lost, you come under stress. Laugh heartily at least once a day. Children laugh easily. They keep on laughing even for no reason, no rhyme or reason they laugh. They feel so happy, you know, even if you just give them a simple toy of 10 rupees or 50 rupees, you know. But when you grow, it does not happen. You, you generally get angry, you do not talk to anybody, you, you keep mum, you keep silence. Laughing every day, smiling every day helps you a lot. Eat green daily, green stuff, vegetables, fruits. Avoid emotional eating. When you are not happy, you keep on eating. When you see bloody sweets, you eat, you hog like a pig. No. I like it so much, you know. I have not got it. I have not eaten since last one month. That is a bad habit. Start a journal. Journal means make a diary. 
what you are doing for yourself, personal self care, how you are looking after yourself and where, which mistakes you have created which should be corrected. Learn to say no. In our country, it is being taught to everybody, to children particularly, you must obey. Whenever some elder says something, you must do it and you must help out others. But you must understand that sometimes personal well-being also, it should be considered. When you say no, that means you are giving some time to yourself. And if you keep on saying yes, yes, yes every time, you become the yes master and people will keep on burdening you with many responsibilities which will bring stress, unnecessary, unnecessary stress in your life. Stop overthinking. Believe in God. Believe in goodness of human being. Nothing is going to happen bad and if some, something, some bad will come up, or God, yourself, people have got the abilities to overcome all those obstacles, all those bad thinking. What do I do for self-care? Get plenty of sleep, enjoy sunshine, cook, that means have some hobbies, write or draw, talk to yourself, cuddle cats, walk, bike, tidy, clean your homes, clean your desks, clean your rooms. Read, read good books, read about people who can give you inspiration. If you have a garden, look after it, get a hug, go to a child, hug the child, hug your friends and talk to select people, don't talk to everybody, particularly negative people. Thank you friends.